He said that my academic work, my recent work, was theoretically weak. It also meant to me a real dismissal of what it was. I mean, because if people could look at that, you know, collection of women, culture, and society and say that it wasn't, you know, it was theoretically weak, that, that my piece was theoretically weak. I mean, they didn't even say that, that this was a terrific collection and, you know, this is the weakest piece in it. Uh, but it, was, it, it just wasn't a, a serious look at this work on women that I was doing. Um, and I thought, you know, that it, it just would not, it would, it would certainly be a case of, you know, we should get rid of her because she's doing this new stuff and it's about women and that's in some respects, you know, discriminatory. As women, female scholars began to include women as a subject of study, um, their colleagues couldn't believe it and they couldn't see that it was a serious subject of study. So we got everything under the sun from people. It's a fad, it's a passing fancy, it's not important, it's not real scholarship. Um, and then, the, but the real code words were, it's too ideological, weak, theoretically weak, theoretically weak. Anytime I hear that, boy, the, uh, they, I get alert, because then I know someone's covering something that they don't like that's political. We always believed that it was sort of prima facie discriminatory um, not to take the work on women seriously, and it was pretty clear that that was what was theoretically weak. Um, so, uh, in their eyes. So, people, women, any people, but in this period it was women, um, who were doing, introducing gender into their scholarship in one way or another, uh, were getting into trouble because it wasn't the mainstream of the profession. And, uh, it, and it was very early days in feminism, so uh, all of the men were just freaked out about it in one way or another. Um, I mean, I had colleagues who would just sort of walk into my lab and start challenging me about this or that, or I just did this, do you think that's sexist? And, you know, what's wrong with you? You know, just really a kind of aggressive, um, 40 years later, you know, there's a very different sense of it. Um, but the, the guys in those early days were, I mean, I, we were being very militant and they were very threatened. Um, so it was a, you know, kind of a perfect storm, I guess. And similarly, I mean, I suspect that you were aware that Professor Lamphere herself was becoming active in feminist issues on campus. Mm -hmm. um, so, and her intellectual interests were migrating a little bit. So, you know, what were your thoughts about all of that? Well, that's all in writing, you know. I mean, right, that, but we're talking. I know, but I'm just <laughs> saying it was very explicit from our terms that that was not the case in at least two respects. One was, as I said, the idea of uh, gender was always a part of anthropology. I mean, that was one. Now, one could say that uh, with Lamphere and her colleagues and so on, they were cutting out a new way of thinking about it. And that's fine. But as far as the department was concerned, that was not an issue that would deny her tenure. If anything, we had on the books courses that she was teaching, which would continue to be taught. We were looking for somebody to teach the course. So if we were holding that against her, why would we proceed with the subject matter itself? Now, it doesn't mean that one can't be critical of the kind of work that she was doing. If she was doing work on political anthropology, one could say one wasn't being anti-political. So that was our position on it. Right, so there was a difference between being uncomfortable with the direction of her work versus being uncomfortable with the quality of her work. That's the distinction you're drawing. In our discussions, that certainly was a part of it. But let me just emphasize again that these are not black and white issues. And as I said, not only uh, in writing to her, but in many other circumstances, that if conditions had been different, if we didn't have that economic pressure, if there was no hesitation on expansion of the department as far as awarding tenure, she probably would have gotten it. Because we're not talking about the best person in the world. None of us were best, but we were trying to. 
And I had no doubt that she was trying to too. So as a person, there I am caught. On the one hand, my friend, my colleague, and some of the letters I wrote, I tried to be as nice as I possibly could. Well, those came back to bite me. But, you know, that's okay. 